Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I'm glad you're with me today. I want to take you on a journey in Genesis that's going to help your life. It's called Restoring God's Interrupted Plan. It's a great study and it's going to be just for you and I to get in the Word of God together and you will love it. Here's the plan. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to study the Word together right here and then we're going to do a Q&A session with a bunch of folks and share and interact together. It's going to be fun. I want you to stay with me. We're getting ready to jump into Genesis, my friend. Get your feet wet. No, we're going to get your whole body dumped. It's going to be great. Stay right there. And let me read for you the beginning of our study in the book of Genesis. It's a powerful book. Welcome to Overcoming by Faith's online Bible study. We hope you are blessed by today's message. Now, let's join Pastor Rick. Hi, this is Pastor Rick. Glad you're with us today as we continue our study in the book of Genesis. I love this book. One more time. I love this book because it's a book about how it all started. It shows you what went right and what went wrong. God said he did everything right. We came along and did stuff wrong. <laughs> So we're here, and it is an amazing study that brings to light a lot of great things. So what I want to do is get you to turn with me to Genesis in chapter 27. We're going to pick up at a guy's life. His name is Jacob. And in this study, uh, the goal is to show you how disunity comes into a family. This is a story that didn't have to happen. This is a story that takes us down a path that God never intended. The problem with this guy, Jacob, is he has this tendency to trick people, manipulate people. He's a guy who's um, a fast talker. Uh, this could, be a, could have been a flim-flam guy. This could have been one of those guys who went out and high roller and, and took everything from everybody that trusted him. But he also was a godly guy. Now, that's kind of an interesting conflict. Because you'd think that a guy that loved God wouldn't be this way. But you listen to some preachers. You listen to guys who... <laughs> <laughs> I hope you heard that right. Uh, we can be very convincing. And, and sometimes if we're not careful, you can use your gift of communication to do damage. And so I want you to stay with me as we take you on this journey. It's going to be life-changing, soul-lifting, and heart-throbbingly good. I promise. Stay right there. I'll be back in just a minute to share it with you. Get your Bible open. Get ready. It's going to be a great journey. Genesis is going to be good. Chapter 27. Join me in just a second. Stay right there. Well, let's get to it. The book of Genesis chapter 27. I hope you're studying this along with me using uh, a, a commentary that I love, which is the one by um, Dr. Tony Evans. And it's a great commentary. Uh, and it covers, his commentary covers the book of Genesis and a number of other books in the Bible. It's a really good resource. So you can get that, read chapter 27 in that commentary and enjoy the information that will be in addition to what I'm going to share. My goal is to take you through several men in, in the New Testament, in, I'm sorry, in the New Testament, but in Genesis, 
the New Testament would be later, another study, but in Genesis that really covered um, a number of important issues that God tried to restore. Because man had gotten off and there was this interrupted plan. God started with Adam and Eve with a great plan. He wanted to redeem man, give man a planet, fix man, give him a wife, a children, family, uh, incredible opportunity, but he blew it in the garden in Genesis chapter 3. In chapter 4, his sons come along, and then Cain lays Abel, and it gets worse. In chapter 5, he describes all of the various things that happened, all the various um, uh, nations that came out of that womb, out of, that, out of their uh, womb, and it was amazing. And then chapter 6, man falls apart. Noah comes along, and God has to start all over again. And then go to chapter 7 and 8 and 9, you hear Noah's life, chapter 10. Then you hear about the Tower of Babel, where you had this incredible group of people that wanted to stay in one place. They didn't want to replenish the earth, and God came down, scattered their languages, and forced them out. Then you get to chapter 11, and you see the first patriarch, Abraham, it's an incredible guy who had great faith and confidence, but he had to wait 25 years to have a child. And finally, he has a son, Isaac. Now, he goes through a lot of, lot of different challenges and changes. But when you get to chapter 11, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 20, 21, Isaac comes along, his son, 25 years waiting to have one baby. And then Isaac begins to have these incredible children. Jacob and Esau are his two sons, and these sons uh, have this conflict together that becomes part of a narrative that takes us to the end of Genesis in chapter 50. But I want you to note with me in Genesis chapter 27, there is a, an amazing division that exists between Isaac's sons. Now you got to remember, Isaac was the, the, the son that, God, that Abraham prayed for. And when the son finally comes, found his grandchildren come into, into being and they're in strife. Esau and Jacob were pictured as people who struggled from the birth, from the, from the birth canal, literally, when you read their story. But I want you, and you can start that story in chapter 25 of Genesis, and it goes all the way through chapter 36, and you can see the, from the birth all the way through to the, the, the very um, end of their life, this incredible struggle, especially with Esau and Jacob. So let me give you a list of things because I want to jump into the story in chapter 27, verse 41. And I want you to see how Jacob has this habit, as I said, of tricking people. And he tricked his brother out of his birthright uh, for a, a bowl of soup. He, his brother was hungry one day and he, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you this soup if you're hungry, if you give me your birthright. And so the brother gives up his birthright. Incredible. This is a major decision, a poor decision by Esau, but it's part of, of, Esau, of Jacob's uh, skill to manipulate people and push them into bad position and bad choices. Instead of saying, brother, look, you're hungry, let me give you the soup. Well, another time comes up in chapter 27 where Jacob's um, dad, is, Isaac, is about to bless him and about to bestow an inheritance on him. And when he does, um, it becomes this incredible moment where uh, Esau has to go out and, and his father says, well, I'm going to bless you after you bring, bring me back my favorite meal. And he goes out to get his favorite daddy, his favorite meal for his daddy. He's going to go catch some, some deer or whatever and, and come back, prepare it, give it to his father, and then his father's going to pray for him. Well, Jacob hears about it. His mother in particular, Rebecca, hears and tells Jacob. Jacob then goes in, pretends to be the dad. Dad has bad eyesight. They cook up something, and uh, of course the mom knows how he likes it, so they cook it up, give it to him, and he bestows the blessing upon Jacob and not Esau. And when he prophesies this great blessing upon Esau in Jacob's life, thinking it's Esau, later on Esau comes in. Esau finds out that Jacob has stolen his blessing and he is furious. And he says, is there not anything left that you can bless me with? Because you, you sold all the blessing upon my brother. And when the Bible says that Esau heard what Jacob had done to him, Esau makes this decision in chapter 27 because of what he calls family betrayal. Look at verse 41 of chapter 27 of Genesis. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. This is a moment where you see family betrayal. A brother, big brother, feels that his little brother has deceived him. And it's so violent now that he wants to kill him. To him, this is the last betrayal, the last trick. He'll never, ever live once dad's gone. I'm going to kill him. And in that moment, you see how bad family can be. 
So let me ask you a question. I want to ask you, there are four interruptions to God's plan in Jacob's life. This was not God's plan. He did not want him in strife with his brother. He did not want him to go through this moment, but this is because of a decision he made. So there are four things I want you to note that I'm going to run through quickly that will help you think about it. And then I'm going to leave you with three questions to think about. First of all, have you ever faced family betrayal? That's what you're going to see in this story. You've already seen it. Secondly, have you ever seen family strife? This is a life full of strife and tension. Thirdly, there's some family fleeing. They're going to start running from each other. Jacob is going to run from Esau. And then fourthly, family confrontation. That moment when you come back together and you face the truth. There's something about confronting yourself. And in our story, we're going to see in the confrontation that Jacob's going to have with his uncle Laban, we're going to see something fantastic come to light in Jacob's life. There are lots, a lot in Jacob's life I can talk about. He ends up having a, a wrestling match with, match with an angel. He ends up having this incredible moment where he is, he's forced to face himself. But I want to go back and I want you to first think about the first thing that we mentioned, family betrayal. Have you been betrayed? Do you feel as if someone has let you down, taken something from you that was not right? Where did it lead? I want to show you where it led in this family. In verse 42, it led to family strife that was ongoing. Verse 42 said, In the words of Esau, her older son, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Surely your brother Esau confirms, confirm, comforts rather himself concerning you by intending to kill you. This is the moment where it has gotten out of control, and that's often what happens in family strife. It moves to another level that it shouldn't. It's one of the worst things an officer can ever go to a police officer is a family dispute. It's where people who are blood have a moment of strife and tension. This leads to a decision that was painful. He had to run. Families have to separate because of the strife. This was, again, never God's plan. God never intended for this to happen. This loss of unity was a heartbreaking thing to watch. And what's going to happen over time is God's going to restore this to them as a family. But right now they're in strife right now. Watch what happens in verse 43. He flees. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. This is the mama talking to the son. Flee to my brother Laban in Haran. Now, if you remember, Haran was the place that Abraham stopped at and didn't get to his destination. He started off in Ur, right? Then he goes up to, to, to Haran and then he ends up, ends up um, coming to Canaan. Well, now we're all in Canaan, and now the mom says, you better go back to Haran, where my, my dad, my, my, uncle's, my uncle's there, your uncle's there, and I want you to stay with my brother, Laban. Now, Laban is an interesting guy, and you can read his story later on. Laban is a master trickster. Laban is the guy that is a, he's 10 times more <laughs> of a trickster than Jacob could ever be. And sometimes what God has to do is he has to get you to run from where you are, move you from one place to another, and then you have to meet your match. Laban was the match for Jacob. The Bible says this, verse 44, and stay with him a few days until your brother's fury turns away. Now, mom thought this would be just for a few days. Now, he gets angry. You just, you, just, you just have to go for a few days. This turns into years. You'll see in a minute, verse 45, until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved also of you, you both in one day? So I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose your, um, your dad, and I'm going to lose you. And just listen, go hang out with Laban until your brother Esau calms down. Now, please understand, this is, this is tragic, but this is typical family. Family strife, family division. But look at what happens later on. Now, this is important because where mom thought this was going to be a few minutes, it took years. In Genesis chapter 31, if you could jump ahead to verse 41, Genesis 31, I want to show you, finally after years of being with Laban, I want you to listen to the description. This is what it took to change Jacob's life. This is what it took to change his attitude. Look at me at verse 41. Thus I've been, this is, let me set the stage here. Jacob has been married twice. He, he went there and wanted to get married to one woman and ended up having to marry the, uh, another one. And so he's had to go through all of this hardship. He went in, fell in love with the younger daughter, wanted to marry her, and, and found out at the wedding night that the father switched the brides and he ended up with the one he didn't want to marry, the older sister. 
And so now he's, he's had to stay there and serve several years uh, just to get to the woman he wanted to marry. And now he's sitting there with two wives and he's got all these kids and he's got all these you know, with 12 children. All this stuff, all that happens in his life is because of his need to be delivered from being manipulative. What will it take for God to deliver you? Well, finally, he breaks free from Laban, decides to take a run for it. Laban hears about it, chases him down and says, why are you leaving me? And here is his response. And it tells you what he's gone through and what it took for God to change him. Look with me at chapter Genesis 31, verse 41. Thus, I have been in your house 20 years. Notice that 20 years. Mom thought it was going to be a few days, but it's 20 years. I served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock, and you have changed my wages ten times. Unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of God of Isaac had been with me, surely at now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my affliction and the and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. Wow. In other words, I'm leaving. But it took 20 years. This is a story about how a family gets out of control. The question is, is your family out of control? How long will it take for you folks to see this is not the path? This is not the right way. The three questions I'm going to put on the screen I want you to think about. There's more I could say, but I want you to think about these three simple questions. Number one, are you tempted to feel betrayed by your family? Number two. How have you managed the tensions in your family? And number three, how does your family respond to healthy confrontations? The confrontation with Laban leads to this great moment where he finally leaves. And he, he prays this prayer, which I see people pray, which is really not a good prayer to pray at the end of church. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. That whole prayer was a prayer of, I hope I don't see you again. I hope you don't see me again. It was really not a good moment. But in that moment, in this moment, when you see him come to this place, this is a man living where God never intended him to live. Now, what's going to happen is God's going to bring deliverance in our next teaching. Joseph, his son, is going to be the one who brings healing to this family. But it's going to be one with a whole lot of lessons. And that, my friend, I'll pick up in our next study. Let me pray for you. I'm going to leave the questions up on the screen after I pray. Think about these questions and see if you can apply them to your life. Answer them in your own family, and let's see if we can help your family get better. Father, I thank you for this time together. I pray your word has blessed their hearts. Give them strength, give them healing, and give them grace. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Pastor Ricky Temple right here in Genesis Study. Bible study with me. It's been fun. It's been good. I'll see you on our next segment. The story of Joseph. You don't want to miss it. Pulls it all together. See you next time. We encourage you to check out and share this message as well as other messages via the Overcoming by Faith website or the OBF app. Hey, make sure you join me for all the amazing times we're going to have about questions and answers around the book of Genesis. You know this book can change your life. It's the beginning of everything, God's original plan. And we're going to take some live questions. And if you can't be there in person, be there on demand. It's going to be great. I'll see you in the book of Genesis.